How do you fit two systems into one mask? Some wanted the 3M respirator alternative, and others just wanted a simple setup with a simple filter. Well, here's my take. Let's go. Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Today, we will look at the 3D printed dual mask. First, we will go over the basics and the design thinking behind it. Then, I will show you how to assemble it. Third, I will show you all my print settings specifically for Andrew 3, so you guys can print it yourself. For those who wanted to jump ahead, you can check the timestamp in the description below. Lastly, I'm doing a giveaway so make sure you guys stick around. So what exactly is a dual mask? As the name suggests, this mask works in two systems. One, it can be operated with just a simple filter. And for those of you who need it to wear for a long period of time or requires higher airflow and comfort, they can choose to use the more advanced 3 amp mount system with exhaustion system. I'm sure at this point you are a little bit confused, but don't worry, let me explain the design and by the end of it, I'm sure you will know exactly which setup you will need. In regards to the design, the dual mask took me roughly about two months to get to this stage. I must give a big thanks to the Fusion 360 community to answer all my beginner questions as I had zero knowledge and background in 3D modeling. So for those of you who want to make changes and want to make a new design, do it. It's never too late. It's only too late if you never give it a try. With that out of the way, let's start with the major design obstacles. The number one key obstacle for any kind of mask is the seal. The mask must have a proper seal or else why bother wearing a mask at all? As simple as it might sound, a proper seal has to do with a lot of things. For one, the fit and sizing. Then there's the tolerance for when you speak and your facial movement. Moreover, the comfort. And last but not least, to keep the consistency, no post-production or add-ons after the mask has been printed, such as adding foams, gluing, or stitching. With that in mind, I have decided to modulize into different parts because A, you can print different parts with different filaments and different materials. B, it is easier to make improvements for parts in the future. C, breaking into parts does not require support on printing. D. The components are easily replaced if they are broken or worn out. In terms of parts, the dual mask is made with three major components. The cushion, which is the largest body of the mask. The core, which handles the filter and exhaustion system. And lastly, the adapter on the sides. For the cushion body, I've picked a flexible TPU filament as it give a good seal. Specifically, I have used the 95A TPU, which is less flexible TPU, but provides the softness and sturdiness for the main body. The way to read how flexible or softness of a TPU is by the number. The lower the number, the softer it is, and vice versa. The higher the number, the harder it is. With the current design, I'm sure you can use the softer TPU, but I chose 95A because many are printing with Ender 3 and is easier to handle. And most important of all, I was able to print great results with the 95A filaments without any new purchase for the extruder. As to the core and adapter, I've picked PLA as it is quite handy to most. I've also tried printing it with PETG, but I've found that printing in PETG requires much higher infills or else it can snap easily, especially on small fine prints. 
Of course, if you have the time, PETG does yield a better durability, especially under heat, as the heat tolerance is much higher. Either way, both materials should work fine. It is just a matter of personal preference and availability. The core plays a big part in this design. As the name suggests, it is where everything happens and connects. The strap, the filter or exhaustions, the adapters, and the connection to the cushion. Speaking of which, because the cushion and the core are printed with different materials, merging them securely with the good seal was quite challenging. I've actually spent a lot of time figuring out how to do it. And at last, I've designed the wings which connect the core with the cushion and the adapters forming a very sturdy structure. Let's talk about the assembly. To assemble the dual mask, we need to first twist the core 90 degrees towards the cushion. The orientation will give enough room for the wings to fit inside the cushion with just a little bit of pressure on the cushion from top and bottom. Once the wings are in, twist the core to the proper orientation and make sure the rims and edges are properly attached. After that, we insert the inner adapter for both sides. And finally, we twist the core backing and this forms the foundation assembly for the dual mask. For those who wanted to do a simple setup, twist the outer adapter seal for both sides. Then we put the filter inside the core. In terms of filter, I've used a cutout from the sterilization wrap as it is 99% BFE. For those who have no clue what a sterilization wrap is, you can check out my previous video I've made in the link down below. Another alternative to sterilization wrap is that you can cut out from a surgical mask. And I know some of you are still using cotton pads as a filter, and I don't really recommend you using it as it doesn't have a high enough filtration. Okay, once the filter is in, we put the filter back in to secure and flatten out the filter. And lastly, we twist the cover to finish up the assembly. For those who wanted a more advanced setup with a 3M mount and exhaustion system, first, we need to remove cover, filter backing, and the filter. Then the adapter seal from both sides. Now that we're at the foundation, we put the 3M mount adapters on both sides and put in the adapter ring. Then assemble the valve TPU with the valve backing. And lastly, put it inside the core and twist in the cover. In terms of print settings, let's start with the most difficult part. I must say printing TPU was a nightmare on the Ender 3. It literally took me three days to figure it out. In short, it's all about the extruder. It doesn't allow the flexible filaments to push through consistently. For details, you can check out Chuck's video. I have linked it in the description down below. To overcome it, there are two things we need to do. First, we need to print out a new extruder. I've included the Thinkiverse link in the description. Two, we need a 15 mm tube insert into the new extruder. If you have a PTFE tube around, that's great, but for those who don't, don't worry, I have a workaround. Instead of buying one and wait for the shipping, I might as well just cut it right from the white tube that comes with the Ender 3, the tube that going into the extruder. Give this a try first. For me, it works perfectly fine. And if anything goes wrong, you can always order a new tube. With the extruder and tube tip in place, 
the TPU filament should push through nicely. I'm using the Esun 95A TPU and here are the following settings that I used on the Ultimaker Cura. In terms of printing TPU, the number one priority is speed, but not in a fast way. TPU likes it very, very slow. The more flexible it is, the slower you should be running your print. I set it at 30 millimeters per second on a 95A TPU and 15 for the initial layer speed. Second is temperature. I put it as 205 Celsius for the nozzle and 60 on the glass bed. In terms of cooling fan speed, I turn it down to 50%. In terms of printing TPU, the retraction is actually very important. I've changed the retraction to 3mm distance at 20mm per second. For even more flexible TPU, you might want to turn off the retractions. Then we come to the layer height, which was set at 0.2 with 20% infill. Lastly, one important thing to note is bed leveling. I find it the TPU requires a little bit more room than the PLA. So for leveling, try not to do it so tight. Okay, let's move on to hard filament PLA. Okay, let's start with speed. I set it at 50 mm per second, just to be on the safe side. The travel speed, 150 as usual, and the initial layer is set at 20. This is basically the default for the Cura. As to printing temperature, I'm printing it at 205 degrees with 60 on the glass plate. In terms of cooling, I have enabled it on 100%. I've also tweaked the retraction distance to 6 mm and retraction speed at 25 mm per second. And in terms of layer height, I have it at 0.2 mm and the infill at 15%. For PETG, my speed was at 40 mm per second, travel speed 150, initial layer at 15 mm per second. In terms of printing temperature, PETG requires a much higher temperature. I printed at 235 Celsius with the bed plate at 90 degrees. Retraction wise, I put the distance at 4 mm, the speed at 25 mm per second. For layer height, I put it at 0.2 mm and infill at 30%. Here's the summary of things you need to print. For a simple setup, you need the cushion, the core, the core backing, inner adapter. You need to print two of them to go on each side. The outer adapter seal, also two of them. Filter backing, and lastly, the cover. For the more advanced setup for the 3M mount, you need the cushion, the core, the core backing, two inner adapter, two outer 3M adapter, two adapter ring, one valve, one valve backing, and lastly the cover. For all the components, you do not need to use any support, just as long as you print them in the correct orientation. So there you have it guys, that's all there is to it for the dual mask. Obviously, there are future projects or future parts for the dual mask that I'm working on. For one, the strap system. And for those of you who have any suggestions or any comments, you're more than welcome to comment down below or email me. Lastly, for the giveaway, for those who really need them and really want this mask, make sure you sign up in the link down below. There's a Google form and make sure, make sure you guys enter the information correctly, your address, your email, your phone number. Those are very important so that I don't have to email you guys all over again to confirm it. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button. If you don't, 
yellow button seems okay too. Make sure you share it with your friends, subscribe, and comments down below. Let me know what you think about this mask, what improvement I should make. And I'll see you guys in the next one.